In the midst of a global pandemic, is it still okay to play? Well, Taiwan's pro baseball players certainly would say so, and so would we, as long as it's safe to do so. In today's Taiwan Insider, we're going to offer you some distractions to take your mind off the pandemic. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's start off by taking a look at the stories on our radar. The top story this week, a cluster infection of COVID-19 on a Navy ship. The boat was part of a fleet that left Taiwan on February 21st. It docked in the Pacific nation of Palau from March 12th to 15th as part of a goodwill mission. In late March, the first crew members started to show symptoms. By April 23rd, 29 crew members tested positive, though a majority of them were asymptomatic. Several of them visited public spaces before learning they were infected. Both President Tsai and the defense minister have apologized for the handling of the outbreak. Two Navy admirals have been removed from their posts for negligence that led to the outbreak. One of them, the fleet commander, failed to report all cases of fever on board. He says that's because the medical officer ruled that they were just cases of the common cold. This week, around 900,000 people across Taiwan are receiving relief payments from the government to help them weather the COVID-19 pandemic. Payouts will go to taxi and tour bus drivers and self-employed people with labor insurance, among others. Police have arrested three men in connection with an attack on Hong Kong bookseller Lam Wing Ki in Taipei. Lam fled to Taiwan due to fears of Chinese persecution. On Tuesday, a man threw red paint on Lam at a Taipei coffee shop. The attack is believed to be connected to Lam's plans to open a new bookstore in Taipei on Saturday. Afraid of touching escalator handrails? Taiwan's railway administration has you covered. In fact, special machines are being used to clean just about every high-touch surface in stations, even toilet seats. Now, our words of the week are going to be our favorite diversions at home. You want to guess mine? Yes, I do. What okay. do you have? Watching TV. Uh, red, red Sox. Read. Read. Yes, I love to read. I think reading is really inspiring. Gives me a lot of inspiration and it relaxes the mind, enlightens the mind. I think that's wonderful. I used to be a big reader, but like in the time of pandemic, I've discovered I have no attention span. Are you serious? Yeah, I mean, it gives really me more time to read. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> we'll share notes. You ready for mine? Okay. All right. Sleep. <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have, I have uh, a crowd two at kids. home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to say, you know, I've been beating myself up for trying to get sleep, you know, because I, I feel like it's lazy. But, you know, when you're full of anxiety and if you can sleep, why not get it where you can get it? It's good for your health, too, right? Absolutely. It keeps you, um, your immune system up. That's right. Very good for you. All, All right, right, let's put these on the shelf. Let's start with a closer look at a cluster infection aboard a Taiwanese Navy ship. Now, the dean of the National Taiwan University College of Public Health has some suggestions on how to contain the outbreak. The USS Theodore Roosevelt had over 600 cases. A French aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, had over 1,000 infections. Then there was the Diamond Princess cruise ship now a cluster infection on a Taiwan Navy vessel. The head of National Taiwan University's College of Public Health has these suggestions. <laughs> Professor Zan says the contacts of the people on the boat must be traced to a week before they boarded. Close contacts of confirmed cases should be quarantined for 14 days and monitored for an additional 14 days. The U.S. and Germany have increased testing of asymptomatic people. Dan says it's not like the first stage where you just try to limit the number of infections. Now, if you can learn more about the population, it will be useful for treating the virus and creating vaccines. Dan says Taiwan needs to get ready for the next stage of prevention. He says the nation's military also needs to be vigilant about reporting new cases, considering the close nature of their work. Now, authorities have begun testing the personnel on board that Navy ship where the outbreak occurred, and it's provided some very interesting results. And that's the subject of today's Taiwan Explained. Antibody tests are being discussed in places like Germany and the U.S. as a way for allowing those countries to get back to work. Now, those tests are being used in a very different way here in Taiwan. Now, in today's Taiwan Explained, I'm going to tell you about 
what antibody tests can and cannot tell us. Okay, you have 60 seconds. Are you ready, Andrew? I think so. All right, go. All right, first of all, antibody tests cannot detect an early infection of COVID-19, but they can tell you who's had it and roughly when. That's because different antibodies appear at different times. For example, a general one appears when you first get sick. Another antibody, which can recognize and fight COVID-19, doesn't peak until about 28 days. Now, when they tested personnel on board the Taiwanese Navy ship, this is what they found. Several people on board tested negative for COVID-19, but they had antibodies suggesting an earlier wave of infection on that ship. Now, scientists believe that people with antibodies probably have immunity, but they don't know for how long. Now, the million dollar question is, can these tests help countries to get back to work? Now, the health minister says that there is a scientific basis for using antibody tests to help workers return to work, but there just aren't enough quality tests available for everyone. The minister also says it's not useful to do a lot of antibody testing in Taiwan because the number of cases is too low. Perfect, Andrew. <laughs> Great job. That's a you know, very complicated subject. Very complicated. And I think most people are wondering is how useful will these be to open up societies? What are the current obstacles? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So first of all, I think it's important to reiterate that these tests uh, that show antibodies, uh, they don't necessarily tell you how long people are going to be immune Okay. to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing is, is that people are talking about herd immunity. So the idea is that the more people that have the antibodies, the more that they can slow the spread of the disease because the virus doesn't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, initial testing shows that in places like Wuhan and in some places in the U.S., the uh, only about 3% of the population has antibodies. But in order for herd immunity to take place, you need closer to 60%, some experts are saying. Now, I also mentioned tests. They're having problems with test kits, especially rapid test kits. Uh, for example, the UK ordered millions of these test kits from China only to discover that they're not accurate enough to use. Uh, now, lab tests are much better, um, but like, for example, with the Taiwan Navy tests, they sent them to three different labs to make sure that they would be able to get accurate results. Okay, so we still have a long way to go before all this works out for us. Yes. But thank you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you're you welcome. for that. That's our Taiwan Explained for the week. Taiwan is one of the few places in the world where pro baseball is in play. And we have English commentary so the whole world can enjoy. And about a million viewers have been tuning into each game. Now, to find out more, we sent Leslie Liao to talk with a baseball blogger, Vincent Liao, who has worked with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, as you might guess from the last names, Vincent Liao, Leslie Liao, they are, in fact, brothers. So, yes, we have an Andrew and Chris Cuomo situation going on right here in Taiwan Insider. Let's have a look. ESPN anchor Keith Olbermann, he shared a video of him being up in the middle of the night watching Taiwanese baseball. But in my mind, I couldn't help but think, like, he doesn't really know any of these players. He's not even following it. Is it just a, a sports mentality here? Like, how much familiarity do people really need to be incentivized to watch baseball? Well, let me stop you right there, because um, I think I say kids like you, or right? you're 17 years younger than me, um, probably don't understand how big Keith Oberman is uh, for sports fans. Right, uh, back in the day when there's no internet, well, barely internet, when there's no Twitter, no Facebook, when uh, when we all had to sit in front of TV, wait for ESPN Sports Center to come on, Keith Oberman was the guy. It was Keith Oberman and Dan Patrick, and then they would tell you, tell us what happened throughout the day in the world of sports. So for him to pick up baseball in Taiwan and through his personal Twitter, uh, this is big time for Taiwan for people like us. We understand how big this is, and for for him to pay attention to Taiwan, and actually, you know, have an active interest into it, uh, telling everybody how wonderful this um, baseball game is being played in Taiwan. This is this is big time, big time for Taiwan. He got into a Twitter conversation with uh, President Tsai of Taiwan over right. what's happening in baseball here. I mean, for some of that big to have a dialogue with a country's leader at this point, it's not even baseball; it's almost diplomacy. Pretty much, pretty much. I think uh, he mentioned, right, mm -hmm. he went to, uh, was it Cornell? Yeah, Cornell. Cornell, right, with uh, President Tsai yeah. uh, around the same time. I think there was some translation mistake by the Taiwanese media thinking that, oh, he was claiming he was a classmate of Tsai. Oh, okay. And they were saying that, oh, hey, you're trying to 
trying to, I don't know, uh, how do you say in uh, in English, 趁热度, like you're trying to oh, ride the coattails? Right, you're trying to ride the uh, coattails yeah. of the president. But I think uh, at the end of the day, you know, President Tsai, you know, she responded and she said, hey, why, you know, remember to join us and watch the next game. I think it's a, it, it, it's a great exposure for Taiwan and it also uh, a great um, exposure for Tsai, for President Tsai. She is down to earth enough, right, to care about baseball, to care about um, the celebrity broadcaster in the States is talk is saying about our sports. One of the highlights that Keith Olbermann saw was a bench clearing brawl between right. the Rockington Monkeys right. and uh, what was the other team? The, the Fubang Fubang Guardians. Guardians. Yeah. Now my question is, was that just for dramatic effect? Do these players know that they're being watched and it's like, hey, we got to put on a good show? Because in my memory, I don't really see a lot of brawls in the CPBL, whereas, you know, there always seems to be some guy charging the mound on Sports Center on ESPN back in the States. Right. So for everybody else, um, Leslie Liao is a conspiracy theorist in our family, right? So he thinks when there's a bench clearing bra and the whole world is watching uh, our baseball, this has got to be a show. I mean, the timing is too good. The timing is too good. All joking aside, I want to say um, these Taiwanese baseball players, they take the game very seriously because for them, this is not a reduced season, this is not a condensed season, they're playing the full season and there is a Taiwan series, a championship series at the end of the year. So they are playing for, you know, for the team's success, for their own honor. So for these people watching Taiwanese baseball for the first time, say, overseas, what would you say the biggest difference they might recognize or might notice while watching a Taiwanese baseball game is, never mind the fact that there's no audience here, but what is something that makes Taiwanese baseball distinctly Taiwanese? I think right now it's an empty stadium. There's no, there, there are no fans. They're watching the game. But for these creative teams, they have come up with uh, mannequin robots. Um, you know, uh, even cut out, cut out, print out boards of fans. Actually, fans can submit their photos to the team with the fee. They'll print it out. They'll print your picture on it and print it out and just put it on the seat. And what they say is they'll leave it there until fans are allowed back into the stadium. So every game you will be there with cheering on, you know, in photo form, cheering your player on. So these are the creativities. And also for some of the Americans fans, you would see that even if it's an empty stadium, cheerleaders will be there. Uh, they'll be dancing, they'll be singing, uh, they'll cheer these players on. This is something that's very, you know, that's this is something you don't see in American baseball game. There's no cheerleaders. And you know what? Maybe they should, you know, bring about cheerleaders. So you're saying the MLB could learn a little something from the CPBL. Hey, why not? All right, once again, that was Leslie Liao from Taiwan Insider talking with his brother, the baseball blogger Vincent Liao. We'll have the full interview available for you on Facebook and YouTube. In today's Taiwan by Number, I'm going to give you three ideas for diversions at home. And these three ideas all are connected to Taiwan and they all begin with the letter E. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, anyways. Egg dipping? <laughs> uh, <laughs> elevator riding? No. <laughs> the first one is enjoy the arts. And okay. I want to recommend that people take a virtual tour of the National Palace Museum. It's the largest collection of imperial Chinese art. There are a lot of great virtual tours there. They also have pictures of individual pieces of art. And my question for Andrew is, why are you laughing? Because you're going to ask me how many pieces they have, aren't you? Yeah, how many pictures oh. <laughs> of pieces of art do they have on the website? Oh, on their website? Yeah, you can basically look at the art on the website in That's detail. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. How many pictures? Um, I'm afraid that doesn't make it any easier for me to answer. <laughs> uh, let's say... 1,500. Okay, let's take a look. Whoa. Okay, so 12,727, and that picture <laughs> is of a virtual tour and you, where you can see the jadeite cabbage and the meat-shaped stone Yes. that people love so yes. much. Okay, it's like everybody's favorite is food. <laughs> you know. It's rocks that look like food. Yeah, I mean, right. very primal. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> but I do want to show you a couple pictures. I thought they were really beautiful. There, Here's one of a pillow. So that's a thousand-year-old ceramic pillow from the Northern Song Dynasty. Isn't that beautiful? It's a child. It's Can very, you imagine like sleeping on that though? It's, <laughs> it's so very hard. beautiful and it does not look comfortable. It does not look comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and let me show you one more picture. 
Um, this is a beautiful Yuan Dynasty ceramic bowl. It's over 700 years old. Wow, look Isn't at that. that. Beautiful. The colors are amazing. Uh, I wish that was in my home. I'd yeah. love to <laughs> eat off of that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of beautiful art online at the National Palace Museum website to look at. Okay, now my second idea is to express yourself with a song. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sing right now? I know you're into singing, Andrew. How does this work? Oh my goodness. But, you know, karaoke is extremely popular in Taiwan. My testing. question for you is... Testing, testing. <laughs> my question for you is when, when was it invented? When was what invented? Karaoke. Karaoke? Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It, well, in Japan, right? Right. It was invented in Japan, not in Taiwan, but we love it here. It's like our national pastime. And One of them. It, it, you're talking about that it has a TV screen with the words yeah, and a little the bouncing machine, ball. The machine. The machine. I'm going to say 1980. Okay. Let's take a look. 1971. Whoa. And look at that. That's actually an app. So you actually don't even need to leave your home nowadays to sing. You can just do it on your iPad or your iPhone or your phone. And you don't even need a microphone. But... I don't know. It sounds better with a microphone. I have to say, some of us need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have it back though. Okay, so um, the third uh, idea is to enlighten yourself with a book. And that's, of course, I like reading. Yes. But you can also do that with your family or you can have a virtual book club with your friends. Some of my friends are doing that. Um, so that's my idea. And one of our very most famous bookstore actually has been in the news this week. Elite Bookstore. It's the 24-hour bookstore. Mm. Well, they have a 24-hour branch that is closing next month. Mm -hmm. um, it's very famous. It's made the New York Times, CNN. It's been called Asia's Best Bookstore. But um, they just announced this week, actually, that they're going to have a new 24-hour bookstore. Oh, it's Xingyi, The Xingyi oh. store. So, actually, they announced today. And it's spelled E-S-L-I-T-E. -E. Yes. So, some people say Elite. Some people say Elite. Yeah. yeah. But... Um, I think they say elite in the store. Oh, so, okay. So anyway, I'm asking you, how many titles does that 24-hour bookstore have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Natalie. Um, I don't know. 200,000. Let's take a look. 100,000. It has over 200,000 books, but oh. about 100,000 titles. See, I knew I was right in so one So you were like very close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, those are the ideas. I hope that you enjoyed them. I hope they'd be useful to you and that you can enjoy yourself at home. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about Thailand. Oftentimes, people get Taiwan and Thailand mixed up. There are even features and graphics online explaining the differences between the two. However, recently Taiwan and Thailand have put aside their differences and joined forces online. Why? Buckle up. This is a Thai actor, his name is Bright, and this is his girlfriend who goes by the nickname Nu. Recently, Bright retweeted a photo of Hong Kong and he called the city a country. Chinese netizens didn't like that and started attacking Bright on social media. But Thai netizens came to Bright's defense saying that he didn't do anything wrong. Chinese netizens went a step further and uncovered a photo of when Nu went to Taiwan in 2017. There's a whole back and forth here, but the only thing you really need to know is that Nu said she was trying to go for a Taiwanese style of fashion. <sighs> Chinese netizens didn't like that. They didn't like that one bit. And then there were arguments, back and forths, insults, memes were being thrown around. If you've ever been on the internet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I don't want to talk about the arguments today. If you want to see more of that, just flip through a YouTube comment section. Instead, I do want to focus on this. Thailand, Taiwan, and Hong Kong have banded together and formed the Milk Tea Alliance. The name comes from a mutual like for milk tea with each place having their own distinct interpretation of the beverage. The Milk Tea Alliance started as a unified pushback against Chinese netizens, but since then it's evolved into something much more than that. It's caught the attention of Hong Kong activist Joshua Wong, and even the Ministry of Foreign Affairs put hashtag Milk Tea Partnership in a post commemorating a face mask donation to Thailand. When Taoyuan City Mayor Tsun Wen-chan donated medical equipment to Thailand, they celebrated the occasion by drinking milk tea. The Taiwanese officials drank Thai milk tea, and the Thai officials drank Taiwanese milk tea. Isn't that beautiful? 
The art surrounding the Milk Tea Alliance is absolutely adorable. You have beverages turned into cartoons or straight up humanized versions of milk tea from each country. Finally, the Leslie Liao pick of the week. Twitter user Sad Sad Potato posted this image. This is a flag, apparently, of the Milk Tea Alliance with different colors representing the milk teas from the different parts of the alliance. Hey, I like subtlety sometimes. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. Until next week, stay safe, stay healthy, and Natalie and Andrew, stay away from each other, but maybe have some milk tea. I wouldn't mind some milk tea right now. It sounds great. <laughs> How about a virtual cheers, Leslie? <laughs> And that is Hashtag Taiwan for the week. Okay, now for our lightning round news quiz. We're going to see if Andrew's been paying attention this week or if he's been sleeping. He has <laughs> been sleeping. <laughs> okay, you have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. You can play along at home if you like. Okay. All right. So, are you ready, Andrew? Yes. All right, go. What new way could people in Taiwan order masks this week? Uh, at the counter at a, a, a convenience store. Convenience store, yes. Why did the government just set out an extra $2 million for pro baseball? Uh, for English broadcasts. Yes, to continue through the season. Who got punished for a Navy cluster infection? Uh, two admirals on the boat. That's right. Who got splashed with red paint in Taipei and believes Chinese authorities are behind that? The wing, uh, the the, uh, the the Hong Kong bookseller. Yes, wing, Lam Wing Gay. Lam Wing Gay. Okay, and what prominent magazine featured Tsing Wen in its special Finding Hope edition? Prominent magazine, Time. Yeah, oh. that was actually last <laughs> Friday, I think. Which famous sports figure asked Taiwan for advice on what to do in home isolation? Oh, I have no idea. David Beckham. Oh. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a brawl in Taiwan's pro baseball game on Sunday. Yes. Now, the Monkeys player, Guo Yen Wen, told the umpire the Guardians were using an illegal bat. Yes. What was on that bat? Oh, it was a picture of a person with a monster's head? A human head with a strange animal body. Oh. Opposite. <laughs> okay, but I want to tell you about the rest of the brawl. And then the Guardian pitcher, Henry Sosa, was very angry about that and threw three pitches very close to his body. And the fourth one landed where on his body? Oh, wow. Um, uh, um, on his butt. On his butt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the key so, points, yeah. Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> That's really important. So, so that was fun to watch. Um, mm -hmm. It was not good for social distancing. No. They were all on top of each other. <laughs> not, what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's our news quiz for the week. Well, we hope you enjoyed this playful edition of Taiwan Insider this week. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So, And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.